Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money no matter what, then please subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. <clears throat> and if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. All right, let's take a look at who's on the stream today. Okay, we have JoJo, Flipped Burger, and Taz. Regulars, we appreciate that. Okay, Aiken giving me some notorious love from my Twitter. Thank you. We've got the Caribbean, Kuwait, Kentucky, right? Corona, California. Let's go Rangers, right on. San Paulo, welcome. Oklahoma, Boomer Sooner. Stockton, California, all right? We have Bangladesh, right? And undoubtedly, our friends from the UK will be here soon, all right? Driving back to Georgia, all right? Crypto Turkey from Austin, Texas, baby. Hook em horns. Well, there's green on the screen today. That's refreshing. We can postpone the end of the world for at least one or two days or maybe even more. Here comes London and Atlanta. All right. <laughs> Somebody says, howdy from the future. The future is now. So what are we going to do today? All right. So we're going to go over a combination of Bitcoin and Ethereum short-term charts. We're going to talk about why the Fed may be coming in to save the whole financial system. I want to do a little review, right, of the Elliott Wave work that I did yesterday. And of course, we're going to go over altcoins, including the altcoins that you guys need help with. Okay. So, Bitcoin, Ethereum, legacy altcoins, right? And I've even got a little on chain overtime. And we are going to talk about the total shit show that's going on in the precious metals market and what it means for crypto. All right, so let's jump in to the market update. Let's jump in to the market update. I am clicking the button. Okay, while I'm doing all this, let's see who else is on the stream. Okay, so we have Canada in the house. Token Metrics family in South Africa, along with London. Welcome. All right, folks, here comes the bazooka, okay? The bazooka is an old-school shoulder-fired weapon, all right? It's referred to or it's used as slang in the American language or in American English for when something big is going to happen. Sometimes we say the Fed is going to bring in the bazooka to save the system. Now, you're like, wait a minute. I thought the Fed was hiking rates. I thought the Fed was going to wreck everything. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let's think about this for a second. First of all, uh, new customers will get 10% off token metrics, right? Lifetime. Meaning if you subscribe now during Women's History Month and don't cancel, you will get 10% off the subscription for life. All right? So you can drop your monthly cost down to either $89 or $17 for those you know, sort of like basic plans. A lot of altcoins have been mooning, right? A lot of altcoins have been actually doing well, particularly in the DeFi sector. That's small cap altcoins. Now, I don't talk about that much because that's for the paying customers. But you definitely want to check out token metrics, particularly if this market has got an upspurt. You may be able to make all the money that you spend on the subscription this year, say in the next two weeks or month. Now, 
Let's begin with what is going on in legacy. You have heard that the Russian ruble has dropped a lot. You've heard that. But have you heard that the Polish currency has collapsed? They quote it via the Swiss franc, okay? Because Poland issues a lot of its bonds denominated in Swiss francs. Yesterday, the Polish currency collapsed and the central bank couldn't stop it from collapsing. Now, why would the Polish currency collapse? Well, I don't know. Cyber attack or the Russians deploying battlefield mini nuclear weapons could be the catalyst. The bottom line is the central bank could stop it. So the ruble collapsed. Yeah, okay. Now we have Western currencies collapsing. Okay. European banks. European banks could go down a lot. European banks have loaned money to Russia and they may not get that money back. Don't you think the Fed and the ECB know this? Do you think they're just going to sit around and wait for everything to blow up? Because it could blow up. But have we reached a point where bad is good? I wonder. Let's look at XLF. XLF is an ETF containing all the big American bank stocks. Now, there's this expanding triangle formation. And recently, XLF tried to break out of the bottom of that formation for obvious reasons, right? European banks blow up. U.S. banks have problems. Do you seriously think the Fed is going to let the U.S. banking system blow up because of what's going on with the Russians? In other words, it's too late for rate hikes to stop inflation, right? You know, wheat's 3X, commodities look like altcoins. What's the Fed going to do? Right? Oh, yeah, the inflation number's coming out on the 10th. Yeah, okay, it's going to be terrible. Where is it going to be in six months? A lot worse. What can the Fed do about that? Nothing. Right? What does the Fed have to do? Prevent a blow up in the banking system because this sanctions, economic war, it doesn't matter whose side you're on. It doesn't matter whether you're at East or West. It doesn't matter. The stress in the financial system is epic. And that Polish currency collapse is not funny. Seriously. Neither is distress in U.S. banks. Now, with this expanding range in XLF, one of two things can happen. It broke out of the bottom and then came back into the formation. Normally, based on technical theory, that means it could break out of the top of the formation. And you're like, whoa. What would actually make U.S. banks rally? Well, how about the Fed coming in with the bazooka and flooding the system with money? And instead of doing less money printing, they come in and do a lot more. And they say, no matter what, we're saving the system. Vladimir Putin is not taking down the system. Or the reaction of Vladimir Putin is not taking down the system. Something to think about. Okay, now this is the Russian ruble. So I've been making you guys look at it versus the dollar. Now I figured out how to flip it so you can actually see the ruble crash. But I'm looking down on the bottom at the 13-day RSI. And maybe this ruble sell-off is overdone. Right? Like what would happen if the Russian ruble bounced? Right? What would happen if the Fed came in and flooded the system with money to try to keep the dollar down? So no one's thinking about the Russian ruble bouncing, but I am, right? A lot of people don't, a lot of people maybe on the stream don't know this, but I told our premium customer group three months ago to keep the US dollar versus the ruble on their screen, right? Now I'm wondering if the ruble can actually bounce. Crude oil, crude oil is going to 200, right? It's going to the moon, right? It's easy to be bullish crude now. Now, crude oil could go to $200. Let's not be stupid. I get it. But I got a technical resistance point, both GAN and hidden pivots at 135 on Brent. So if oil doesn't go through 135 and the ruble bounces, could that be constructive for risk assets or crypto? Maybe, right? 
S&P futures, okay, S&P futures don't look good, but they did bounce off a level at 41.51. So they bounced. It looked terrible this morning. And right now, even though I think, you know, long-term, like the rest of this year, you know, stocks may drag down Bitcoin, and I think Bitcoin's going to wind up actually going higher off a decline in stocks, but that's not today's trade, right? Stocks may eventually go lower, right? But for the moment, they're not. Now, Bitcoin versus the ruble actually took out its recent high. So let me just, just go over this. Bitcoin versus a major currency has made a new high. And Bitcoin versus the dollar is still below 40K. Hmm. I remember this from 2017 where, you know, Bitcoin versus the Zimbabwe currency in the over-the-counter market, and it literally was a counter, was trading much higher than where Bitcoin was in the cash markets versus the dollar. Sometimes this can be a leading indicator. I mean, let's ask yourself this question. Who's talking about Bitcoin at either 47 or 52 versus the dollar? Nobody. Nobody is talking about that. Everyone's talking about the end of the world, right? I was talking about things blowing up before they blew up. Now everyone's talking about it blowing up, which makes me want to talk about things going up. Say that five times fast. Let's go to Ethereum on the four-hour chart. We're going to go to DeMarc in a second. Okay, we'll go to live DeMarc, but there's a 13 bottom in ETH. And ETH is up 5% today. So if ETH is taking out 2607, I don't see any reason why ETH can't go to 3000. I could even make a case for ETH to go to 3400. Because I think there's more upside potential in crypto in terms of just like tactical trading right now. I mean, fiat currency problems are not going away right? If the Polish central bank can't stop its currency from going down, who's got control of any of their currencies, right? Decentralized proof of work, cryptocurrencies that act as money, 13 bottom. Boom. Bitcoin, four hour chart, 13 bottom with that smart DeMarc stochastic indicator flashing, hey, this thing could turn around and go up. And actually they could go up a lot. I mean, realistically, I don't see much resistance until, say, 45. So it's either 42, 45, or 47. Those are like the reasonable upside levels, I think. Luna, stable coins, DeFi. There's problem moving dollars around in the system, or if there's an issue with Tether in any way, right? Because, uh, you know, we're, we're noticing that <clears throat> we're going to talk more later about how Something's going on in nickel and in the metals exchange. And all of a sudden, you know, short sellers and things at 10X can't make their margin calls. You know, so you want to be in the best stable coin possible, right? I know I missed a chance to short Luna at 92. But honestly, I think Luna's going to take out 92 and has a shot at 140. You know, I, I mean, if I'm wrong, Luna will go from 82 to 70 something. If I'm right, Luna will go from 82 to 140. Risk reward seems to favor the upside as it does in Cosmos, right? I know Cosmos is sitting on support at 27. Now, the moving averages are a little bit tangled up, so I don't know that you have to go out and get massively long Cosmos right this second, but I do see upside potential, particularly if you want to do some long-term hodling, right? I mean, Cosmos is right back where it was, at the start of the year, everyone's like, oh my God, I went to 42 and I missed out. Okay, well, that's at 27 now. Now let's go to right to the overtime. Okay, this is the Bitcoin futures funding rate. Okay, I find it very interesting that it looks like nobody has any real interest in shorting Bitcoin right now. In other words, shorts got really short and then they got smoked. And I don't think shorts want to come back which I think favors longs. Now, Ethereum goes back and forth kind of wildly, right? We go from, you know, everyone's bullish to everyone's bearish back and forth. But I have been noticing that the red histogram candles have been getting smaller. 
right? I don't know if there's a tremendous interest in being short Ethereum at 2,500, right? It, it feels stupid cheap to me. Now let's talk about commodities. This is an altcoin, right? No, it's not. It's nickel as in the metal, right? Every metal that comes out of Russia is mooning, right? So nickel has caused so many problems that the people who were short nickel may not be able to make their margin calls, okay? So they got liquidated, right? And they have to pay winners. You know, shorts have losses and they lose money because they have to pay the winners. That's how futures work. This is at the London Metals Exchange, I believe, the LME, okay? So people can't meet their margin calls. That's how hard commodities are moving. Why am I telling you this? Well, because the next commodity to act like this could be gold. Gold bugs have been writing for years about how there's a huge disparity between the supply of physical gold and the amount of like paper gold that you can trade via futures and ETFs. You actually want physical gold? Okay. Somebody comes after physical gold. Gold is going to go a lot higher, like a lot higher, like $5,000, $10,000, right? If what happens to gold, what happens to nickel happens to gold. Okay. Gold can go up a lot. Now, Bitcoin may also be able to follow gold. It may be a reverse of what it's been in the past where gold actually leads crypto right? Not just because it's a safe haven, because it's money, right? It's useful as money. Next commodity moonshot. Why not? This is a speculative crypto altcoin show. So let's find the next moonshot in commodities. My money is on platinum. Okay. Platinum is used to make catalytic converters in cars and is also a precious metal. So if gold moons and they can't get a hold of gold, Platinum may be next. Also, as I understand it, Russia controls a large supply of platinum. Okay, so at the end of the day, what's the market update? The market update is if the financial system is in trouble, right, and shorts are too afraid to be short, then longs have an advantage in crypto. Now, crypto may not go up forever, but this could be a really sharp trading rally. That all these bearish events, like with the CPI number and the Fed meeting on the 16th, yeah, the Fed may raise rates. They may try to talk tough on inflation. But folks, the printing press is not going to get shut off here. Matter of fact, they may actually do more. They won't tell you that. But Mr. Market and Gold will show you that. And that is the market update. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. All right, somebody works in recycling and loves that I'm talking about metals. Appreciate that. Okay. Okay, Spin says ETH is still on a downtrend. Yes, crypto is in a downtrend. I want to do some Elliott Wave from yesterday and, you know, talk about that. Okay, BTC is retesting 39K right now. Yeah, it's, it, it's got a shot at taking that out. Okay, some love from S Sydney, Australia. Banking bailouts 2.0. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's, let's, okay. Oh, we have Italy in the house, Estonia and Belgium. Welcome. All right. Somebody's asking, check out rhodium prices. Oh my God. I was looking at aluminum. It's, it's unbelievable. Like co commodities look like altcoins. Okay. Let's get, let's get to the charts. Let's get busy on Bitcoin. All right, I want to start with a complicated chart and clarify it from yesterday because I, I doubt it was clear. I doubt. All right, so let's talk about Elliott Wave in Bitcoin. Oh. Okay. So as somebody just noted, okay, Bitcoin and crypto is in a downtrend. So if you look at the red line, right? That's the trend so far. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's the first part of the downtrend. Now, 
what part of the trend are we in right now? We are in, I think, okay, the A, B, C correction. Okay. In other words, when you have a big trend, there's kind of a sideways portion in the middle. And the question is how to make money on the sideways portion, right? Before any potential different down move that's over here, right? So there may be a down move later, but you know, what does this, what does this middle part look like, right? This sideways action, right? I think Bitcoin can take out 45. Now, I don't know if it's going to go to 56, but it could go to 47 and it may even go to 52. <laughs> you know what? Crypto can't surprise on the upside if the Fed has to, has to be more dovish and acknowledge risks in the financial system. Don't believe that there are risks in the financial system. Look at this zero hedge article. Okay. We could be looking at the early stages of a classic liquidity crisis. In other words, Lehman brothers all over again. So if that's true, you know, I threw this slide up and I was like, well, you know, maybe nobody understood the Elliott wave. This, this part right here, where can this thing go? Can it go to 47? Can it go to 52? Why not? Okay, if Bitcoin's at 52, what's going to happen with ETH and some of the top altcoins? Okay, so now we're going to switch over to DeMarc, right? So here's DeMarc in ETH. So let's just get right to it. So here was the 13 bottom we highlighted. Okay, I believe this was yesterday, March 7th. Uh, I believe my message was let them puke it out, which they did. And now it looks like the bulls are trying to counterattack. See this one, two, three, right? The bulls are trying to take this thing back up. This is the Ethereum four hour chart. Let's go to the Bitcoin four hour chart. Oh, look what we got here. We got a 13 bottom, which we talked about. We got the final climactic puke. Okay. Which we mentioned, right? And then now we got the bulls on top of this DeMarc smart moving average. Now, DeMarc is super complicated, right? This is DeMarc's book that explains all the indicators. Amazon showed me it was pretty funny. They showed me I bought the book back in 2003 and it was telling me there was like one left, right? So basically what DeMarc does is he takes regular indicators and he uses quant to make them smart. That's how I say it. So note down here, we got the smart stochastic in orange. See what happened when it was highlighted here, how the market turned around and dumped. Okay, now it's right underneath below the 13 bottom. And I don't see any reason why Bitcoin can't go back to 45K because the cool thing about DeMarc's little system here is it draws support and resistance automatically. So 45,400 is a possibility. Now, let's take a look at some support and resistance levels for Ethereum from a short-term chart. So as much as I would like to get bullish and as easy it is to get bullish on an up day, realistically, Ethereum has to take out 2645 before you can get too excited. All right. Let's take a look at maybe the daily chart of Bitcoin. Okay. That's sort of neutral. All right. It's not bullish. It's not bearish. Let's take a look at ETH. Okay. So ETH is actually quite interesting. Okay. So on the daily chart of ETH, you've got this red shaded area. You've got good support in ETH around 2357. So I know that's, you know, that's far away, right? Uh, and it may take ETH another three or four days. So it's not perfect. It's not like, oh yeah, it's obviously going to move. The only obviously bullish chart to me, I think, is this Ethereum four hour chart. But it's got to break out above 2,600. 
Now let's go to altcoins. Let's see if we got any questions first before I do that. See if anybody's picking up what I'm putting down here. All right. So don't forget that the United States is potentially zeroing in on crypto regulation. I get it. Right. I mean, crypto could blow up at any moment. And what else is new? Right. So they could declare crypto illegal or, or, or try to shut down stable coins. That's why I think Luna is the way to go because the stable coin is backed by activity on the network and Bitcoin. Okay. But yeah, I get it. You know, it's, it's a trading play. Markets sometimes climb the wall of worry. So I've come full circle, right? At 45, I was like, don't FOMO, right? At 2,500 in ETH, I'm like, you know what? This could be a buy. They could squeeze everyone out here. And this whole idea of crypto as a replacement for fiat, as long as equities aren't crashing, right? That crypto could go up. And the Fed could be a positive catalyst. Maybe, right? I mean, I don't want to sell it down here. You know, maybe it's time to be a savage bear. Okay, we'll do that later. If Ethereum takes out 2,300, then we'll switch to the short side. In the meantime, maybe it's worth taking a shot on the upside. Okay, so we have Rose Audio. People are looking for entertainment heat. Says Bitcoin will become the world's reserve currency. One Bitcoin will be worth $1 million in 10 years. Okay, certainly, certainly. All right. Uh, guys like Michael Saylor would agree with you. Okay. All right. So I'm just taking down. We have Sheeb, Ave, KBA. Okay. And we had somebody who was asking for PCX yesterday along with Rose. Okay. Okay. We have Helium and Curve. All right, let's take a look and see what we got here. Okay, let's start with helium. Okay, let's start with see if we can get PCX up first. Okay, not here. Let's try PCX on this chart. Okay, so the good news in PCX is it stopped going down and the moving averages are trying to turn higher. I would say with PCX, okay, it's got to get above $1.84. Okay, if you see PCX take out $1.84, it's good, right? It's probably going to go up. If it gets above that and holds, there is a lot of resistance near that level, okay? So let me just put up PCX daily. In case anyone's watching the video later, by the way, folks, you know, I had a thousand views and a hundred likes yesterday. I was like, wow, what's up with that? Come on, folks. You got to hit the like button. You got to give us some love on this. We got to make a living over here. Okay. Let's talk about helium. See if we can get a four hour chart up here. Software is not cooperating. Okay, there it is. Okay, Jay is asking, I shorted at 2450. Should I hold? All right. Well, I can't give investment advice, but we'll go back to the ETH chart after we do helium. Okay, so helium on a. Daily chart looks pretty good. It's got that smart stochastic thing going on. It's got a 13 bottom on its four hour chart. So that seems to look good to me. Let's go back to the daily. Okay. And it's got this, you know, it's got this band down here. Now, last time that band didn't really work out. Helium kind of went sideways. Up here, it certainly worked out because helium fell out of bed. All right. You know, honestly, if you ask me, 
Would you buy or sell crypto here? I would prefer to buy crypto here, not investment advice. I, I would take my shot. Okay. Somebody was asking for rows. I conveniently have that queued up here. Okay. Yesterday we drew this trend line in rows. Okay. We connected a bunch of bottoms here, here, here. Okay. You know, this has a nine bottom and a nice candlestick going on right now. You know, I, I would say up, I would say up rather than down in this. Okay. Let's go to VeChain. VeChain, the currency, the crypto you hate to love. All right. You just can't stop loving it because how can a supply chain solution not come to the forefront in this environment? Possibly because it comes out of Asia, but still. All right. So this is not investment advice or fundamental analysis. VeChain currently is displaying decent looking candlesticks. Let's see what the smart stochastic says, if anything at all. Okay, so we're noticing a pattern here, right? We're noticing a pattern. Okay, the smart stochastic is flashing green. All right, so if stocks hold together, crypto can do better. Okay, let's look at crypto.com. Okay, again, the same thing with the four hour smart stochastic thing. So if the market doesn't get destroyed or any regulation that comes out is not horrible, <clears throat> okay, this is why I'm, uh, one of the other reasons why I'm bullish Luna, right? This down here feels really bullish and this move right here feels corrective. So this feels like trend resumption to me. It may, it may be, it may not be, but you know, you got to be careful because we have seen Crypto markets where it's like a one coin market. All right. So let's just keep that in mind. Okay. Someone's asking for Audius. Let's see if I can get audio up here. I know this coin is so disappointing. Okay. So speaking of so disappointing, right? So I guess if the world ends, it goes to 59 cents. But notice how there was a 13 bottom. And sometimes after you get the 13 bottom, you get these like climactic pukes, right? Notice it's not always an exact bottom. Now, again, in Audius, right? I have to keep checking the market, but I mean, downside risk is 59 cents, but it was at $1.15 two weeks ago, and now it's at 73 cents. Right. So speculative all coins are going to have problems in this environment. Right. Let's just check the market, see what's going on. Okay. So ETH is up 3%, right? 2580. So somebody said they got short at 2400. Should they hold the position? Well, I can't give you investment advice, but here's what I would say. Okay. ETH, in order to go down, ETH has to take out 2458. So if ETH rotated lower and took that out, then you might be in a better position. Okay. So this is the ETH eight hour chart. All right. And my view is pretty simple, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I did not want to buy ETH up here, right? The, the FOMO up here and the FOMO up here was unbelievable, right? Now everyone hates it. Okay, great. Everyone hates it, all right? But I'm still seeing the ability for ETH to actually move up because ETH got kind of far away from its moving average red and blue line. So it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but, and, and it trades like shit. It's uncomfortable. Right. I look at this. I'm like, oh my God, is this going to go down in my face? And frequently in order to make money in trading, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Nothing ever trades good at a bottom folks. Nothing ever trades bad at a top. I mean, this was like, oh my God, up here. Oh my God. Crypto's a revolution. Fiat's fucked, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> now it's like three days later, we're doing the opposite. It's like, oh my God, you know, the fed comes in with the bazooka and said, we're not going to let this situation tank our banks. 
What happens to crypto? Crypto just goes straight up. Okay, let's take a look at Sheeb. Let's get back over here. Somebody doing like the license to speculate trade. Let's see what's going on in Sheeb. Okay, so the daily chart of Sheeb is neutral to not exciting. Could be four more down days or four more sideways days. Let's see what the four hour chart gives us in Sheeb. There are any additional hints. Whoa, look at this. Okay, so Sheeb had the 13 bottom, right? And then it puked out to the support point that's generated by, it's called the sequential system. So, you know, speculative meme coins, eh, not my favorite, but Sheeb looks like it's on support. And don't laugh, Sheeb is money, right? In other words, what's more secure right now? I don't know, secure. What's a better medium of exchange right now? Sheeb or the Polish currency? Sheeb or the Euro? I don't know, folks. Sheeb might actually be the winner. Somebody might actually prefer Sheeb. Let's see what Sheeb looks like on the trading view charts. Okay. Okay. I lost my moving average system down there. I'll have to get that back. Okay. Let's see if I can get it back live. Nope, I'll have to figure it out. Okay, so again, she probably has to go down and take out the recent low before it's no good. But when I'm looking at this, right, there's a theory with this moving average that if you get reversal candlesticks away from the red and blue lines, it can go up, right? Now, is it comfortable to be bullish Sheeb? No, <laughs> but you know. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to take a shot. I mean, if you can't make money being long now, what are you going to make money being long when this situation with Russia gets worse? Okay, Ave four-hour chart, nice 13 bottom, okay? Now, it's got to get above 125.70, okay? But I do like the fact that it's got this sort of, I don't know, an indication that it can do better. Let's take a look at the daily chart. See if you get anything on the daily chart that is interesting. Okay. So again, Ave. Wow. Okay. Here's the big 13 bottom on the daily chart. Here's the final climactic puke. All right. Maybe you have three more days. You have to wait because you're at a six. It may go to a nine for people new on the stream. We're looking for 13s and nines. He's come from the DeMarc smart system where it actually counts sets of conditions. Right. So sometimes when you get a 13, the trend will reverse. Hey, sometimes when you get a nine, the trend will reverse. Normally, reversals off the 13 can be big. So if you're long Ave and you've been suffering, well, I don't know. Give it three more days. I mean, we all know the world can blow up at any time. So you should be using stops and proper risk management. But I'm just playing risk reward here. I think the risk is that crypto can go up. Now, maybe that's not true. We'll find out. Okay, not giving me anything for KDA. Okay. Okay, Cello is on here. If I'm saying that right. Okay, so this is the daily chart. Looks like you got the 13 bottom, but you didn't get much out of it. Let's look at the four hour chart. So there's a lot of resistance around $3.17. All right, so if it was me, this, this looks like you had your rally and it may be a little bit played out and due to correct. How much? I don't know. See if we can draw a support point here.
Okay, so I would think the good news for this is that there's support at 273. So it's been on an uptrend. It probably needs to correct. I would imagine support is anywhere from 273 to 268. All right, let's check the comments. Okay, JC is talking about crude oil. <laughs> let's make sure I'm not getting hosed on the stream. Let's go back to my crisis watch list, see what's going on with oil. All right, so UK oil is stable and at resistance on the eight hour chart, All right? So stable for the moment in nickel. All right, let's see what else, let's see what, what else has popped up here. All right, somebody said they all look the same. Yeah, a little bit, right? You're going to get a lot of similar readings because, again, the market all trends and moves together. All right, let's look at Avalanche because Avalanche actually may be different. Let's go to our layer one chart because I'm actually interested in Avalanche and Near. Okay. Oh, let's talk about Solana. Okay. So who's bullish Solana? No one, <laughs> right? No one's bullish Solana. Everybody is washed out. There's a 13 and a nine bottom in Solana. And I'm wondering if this thing could turn around and go up. Let's look at Polkadot because I know people like that too. Again, there's a 13 bottom. Okay. The last 13 bottom was right here at 15 and it wound up going to 19. So, you know, there, there's a case for crypto here. Now let's look at AVAX. All right. So yesterday we talked about support at 72. AVAX gave us a really hard time. Now, there's no major DeMarc signals on this. I mean, there is a 13 and a 9, sorry. Let's take a look at the daily chart of AVAX to see if it gives us anything. Because uh, it looks like people are looking for variety. So I would say in AVAX, the point that it's got to get above is 76.31. I mean, it's failed there one, two, three, four days in a row. So realistically, in order to get it going in Avalanche, it's got to get through 72. All right. Now, Phantom, I know people are looking for a bottom in Phantom. And I was actually trying to find a bottom in Phantom as well. Okay. So let's pull up the Phantom 8-hour chart and see if we can find some sort of a bottom. Actually, let's get wild and do a 2-hour chart and see what we can figure out. All right, let's, let's try this. Let's try the hidden pivot method. It's kind of complicated. Okay, you're not supposed to draw it off the absolute top. So let's try drawing it from there and see what we get. See if we get any indication that Phantom has hit a bottom. So the way you draw this is you draw it up. And what you're trying to do is actually figure out when has the downtrend exhausted itself. So in Phantom on the two hour chart, it looks like $1.31 is pretty good support. So, you know, I didn't want to buy it at two. And I'm pretty sure down here in late Feb, I wasn't interested in selling it down here and I'm still not. All right. So let's, let's check phantom. Let's see what the DeMarc work says and see if we can get confirmation of what we were looking at earlier. Okay. So phantom on the daily chart is at a big support point from the DeMarc work at, you know, 135. Now that said, you know, you could be looking at three or four more days of either, you know, sideways, possibly lower, okay? Not tremendously exciting, but I still think risk reward favors the upside, okay? So again, here's the four hour chart, tired of hearing it, I know, but there's a 13 bottom and if it can take out a dollar thirty nine, that might be the ghost signal for Phantom. Right now is, will DeFi money flood back into phantom? Maybe, right? If you like phantom, right? And you want to take a shot, just take a shot. I mean, you, you got to use a stop. Your stop can be below the recent low. 
Okay, let's look at Matic. Okay, same thing. Layer two solutions. I cannot believe, right? Everybody was buying Matic at like $3. This is the four hour chart, which looks like this is a good looking candlestick as of now. Let's see what the daily chart shows in Matic. Okay, again, you may have three or four more days. I, I think it's time to be positive crypto, set up longs with stops and see what happens. Okay. All right. Eric giving me some love. I appreciate that. All right. <clears throat> Flip burgers. thanking me. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm happy to help. Okay. Let's look at Axia coin because I'm going to get asked. So let's pop it up here on the screen. Okay. This thing is just like a total beast. It just sits up at its high like this. All right. So one of the things that Axie is doing is, you know, it, it profit takers come in, right? Profit takers come in, but they can't keep it down. Now these candlesticks can be dangerous if there's like a failed rally, but realistically it looks like they're buying every dip hoping for 14. So a failed rally, like a shooting star and back up would be negative, but you have not made a living telling anybody to take profits in this thing. I thought you should have taken profits down here and just let the moon bag ride. Just, just let the moon bag ride. Right. And if it doesn't work or move your stop up, not investment advice. Yeah. Somebody is, is saying, please hit the like button out there. Okay. XVS. Please hit the like button out there. All right. I, I would call this an XVS a stalemate, right? In other words, you're, you're waiting to see if the people who sold this rally will come back. In other words, will the sellers come back? Now, to state the obvious, you know, if they take out this high at $8.91, that could be very bullish. In other words, if they take that out and keep going, that's constructive. Now, we're a little bit far away from that, all right? But again, check this out, right? In other words, when they took this level out, that should have been bearish, okay? Okay, when <clears throat> X, XVS, let me label this XVS. Okay, this is the eight hour chart. So when XVS took out this level, okay, that should have been negative. Okay, so that's $8.41. So we got to wait and see if that holds. Now, if that holds, it could turn around and move to $8.91. If it doesn't hold, then you probably got, you know, you got small coin itis. Right. In other words, something that is not a high quality coin is not going to survive in this environment. Shit, we got our fingers crossed as to whether or not we can get a rally in Bitcoin or Ethereum. Okay. Somebody said the huge wick on the Solana one hour chart is worrying. Watch Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance. All right. Someone's asking for Stace. I don't know if I have that. Let's see if I have it. Okay, no, I don't have that. Let's see what other requests we got going on. Okay, someone's asking for Ren. That's another heartbreaker coin. But it can be interesting. It can be an interesting leading indicator of the interoperability layer zero sector. Okay. So Ren looks like it had a reversal candle. I would say for Ren, and we'll go to the DeMarc work in a second. I think Ren has really got to get above 36 cents in order to get going. Let's take a look at the daily chart just for laughs to see what's going on there. Okay. So interesting, interesting big green candle today. Okay. So sometimes when Ren gets going, that's when Polkadot gets going. Okay. So let's try Ren over here to see what we get. To see if it looks like everything else. Okay. All right. So on the daily chart, I would say this is mixed, right? 
you got a, a 13 top, you got a 13 bottom that led to a nine top. So that's neutral in my mind. Okay, let's go to a four hour chart. Okay, so this is the smart moving average system. And I'm guessing Ren's got to take out 36 cents on this chart from the smart moving average, which is the same as the Williams fractal. So in Ren, 36 cents in, is key. Um, what's going on with Chainlink? It normally does good in a bear market. Okay, yes, but these guys really came after DeFi. I, I think the place where there's the most fear is in DeFi. They're scared. They're scared that the government is going to come down on stable coins and DeFi. So on a four hour chart, you're right. Chainlink is kind of getting wrecked. There is a 13 and a nine bottom down here. Chainlink's got to take out 1361, right? In order to get going. Let's take a look at Chainlink over here. Just to keep the variety up. Okay, so Chainlink is up 3% today. And Chainlink does seem overdone. Let's try to put in a regular stochastic and see what happens. Okay. So one of the things that I think is really interesting about Chainlink is it's subtle, but if you look at the daily chart, right? One of the things about this Williams alligator moving average system, which by the way, is in trading view, it's not some specialty thing is that, you know, if you can get a reversal candle away from the red and blue lines, meaning it's kind of stretched out relative to its moving averages, you know, if chain link did kind of a bullish candlestick like this, even if it like goes up and comes back down, but it's still green. That could be constructive, right? So even though that intraday chart doesn't look good, it's like, okay, chain link at, where's chain link? Chain link at $13, buy it or sell it. I mean, it didn't pay to be long chain link on a rally up here at 28. So why, wh why would it pay to puke out chain link at 13. This is just a type of a market where you've got to have this like contrarian thinking. I mean, I could sit here and go crypto super bearish. It's in a downtrend. Okay. That's not very exciting and it doesn't create trading opportunities, right? Because I think central banks are not going to let the financial system be effed. And I don't know why the Biden administration would complicate things with crypto regulation. I mean, do they not have better things to do? There's no evidence that anybody is circumventing sanctions with Bitcoin. Okay. It's, it's not, it's not happening. It's not. So why would they bother with it? Well, I guess they could be assholes and do that. But again, you know, you have to take some risk. Nobody wanted to sell at the top. Nobody wanted to sell this thing in, in early February, right before the invasion. And then there was another rally to 15. Nobody wanted to sell there either. So again, not trying to get you married to chain link, but if the link Marines were going to take their shot, you know what? F it. Shoot your shot, man. Shoot your shot. I've been talking about wanting to buy crypto right now. Crypto seems to have stabilized and legacy markets seem to be cooperating. Okay, what is happening with Phantom? I think they had a high profile person leave. Okay, so sometimes they leave, sometimes they come back. I have somebody asking for Waves and Kyber. Okay, I noticed Kyber on tokenmetrics.com showed up. Okay, so let's take a look at Kyber.
Wow. Okay. So Kyber Network, DeFi. Okay. Taking out an important FIB retracement number. And it looks like it wants to go to 350. Right? Period. End of story. Now, let, let's see if I can bring up. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I want to bring up an important point about coins like Kyber. Okay. One of the reasons why it can pay to be a subscriber to token metrics, right? Is that token metrics on its ratings page can actually give you hints as to whether or not these things can move right? These small coins. Like I know that Kyber up 20% today has been one of our highly rated coins for a while. This is the list when you log in to token metrics. Okay. Right here, you're going to see Kyber network. Okay. It has a token metric score of 89 and a market cap to the left of 187. Okay. Now, Let's just, let's just take a little risk and let's look at some of the things you can learn about Kyber on token metrics. Okay. We have a smart, what I call a smart moving average system. Okay. This is called our low frequency trading indicator. Notice how our system got you long all the way back. I'm trying to figure out January 15th is where it got you long. Now you had to put up with some consolidation, but it actually never got you out. One of the things that's interesting, I mean, it's not perfect, right? But when this thing was high in the ratings and DeFi was doing well, even when the market corrected, the system didn't get you out in Kyber. Okay. Let me see if I can type in Luna. Because I think Luna's moving average system was also really interesting. Let's see what we got. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this on the screen, All right? All right. Here's Luna. Now check it out. Luna obviously flipped to bullish, right? On February 27th. So Luna went up and went back down, but guess where it went to? Right where it turned bullish. So these little bullish bearish points can be really interesting, okay, for support and resistance, right? And then there's also like the indices page. Now, I haven't checked this in a while, okay, but, you know, crypto.com for like the one-day index, right? There's Terra, there's Waves, and there's Pax Gold. So every day you could go, all right, let's just say I'm a Kraken trader. Okay, for today's trade, Kraken liked Kyber Network, Pax Gold, which we talked about, Waves, which somebody was asking for. So let's check out Waves on token metrics. Okay, so Waves is up 5% today. Let's see if we get anything on the technical analysis indicator. Okay. So there is the technical analysis indicator turning bullish at 1476. Now, when you have these nice trends, like waves trended all the way down and now it trended up, right? So if you go back to the home page, so you have the moving average system giving you a signal, right? And then you have waves has an 88 and it's one of our top rated coins. And there's all these other small coins that are up today, like, you know, IDEA. This is what the paying customers can check out. And don't forget, you got the 10% off discount, right? You got the 10% off discount for lifetime, potentially, not potentially, 10% off lifetime if you sign up to get this. And I think people who pay a small amount of money can see this ratings page. You got to pay more to go into the depth, but, you know, What's a list of possible like small cap altcoins worth, particularly in a market that goes down a lot?
right? It's almost worth more now than it is in a bear market, in my opinion. Because some guy was complaining earlier. He said, yeah, all the charts look the same. All right, maybe they do, right? But they don't all look the same on the token metrics platform, which is the argument to have it. Now, let's go back and look at Solana. Okay, I want to put Solana back up because somebody was talking about kind of a scary candlestick, right? And this is kind of a scary candlestick. But one of the things that we were talking about with our quant group is we are wondering, given how the, the kind of problems people have been having with the, the fiat currency market, is whether or not coins that can act as payment systems, okay, trying to draw a trend line here, coins that can act as a payment system, whether or not they might go up in this environment. We asked one of our top researchers, we're like, hey man, what do you, what do you think about, you know, like what, what coin strikes you as something that, you know, could not only be used as money, but may actually have the ability to create a payment system on top of the layer one. And surprisingly, the researcher said Solana. And I was like, holy shit, really? Now, I know venture capitalists have huge bags and they may continue to dump on this thing. So I get it. But that's probably why it's done nothing but dump. Who's talking about buying Solana? Nobody. Which makes me want to talk about buying Solana. I mean, okay, you buy at 82, you stop out below 77. Now, I know that's a huge percentage, but what happens if crypto takes off, right? What happens if somebody goes, you know, this thing with the Polish currency and this stuff that's going on at these legacy futures exchanges, you know, this stuff is fucked. You know, I, I want to own crypto. I want to own crypto, right? I, I'm moving money over to crypto.com to get like a crypto-based, you know, debit card, Coinbase too, trying to get something backed by crypto in case there's a problem somewhere else. All right. Taz asking for near. Shame on me for forgetting. Okay. Iron Fist says too expensive. That may be the case with Solana. I don't doubt it. Okay. So near on a four hour chart looks okay. There's nothing bullish or bearish here. Okay. There's support all the way down at $8.46, but I'm sure nobody wants to see it go down there. <clears throat> All right. There's not a lot going on on the daily chart either. So you may have four or five more days of sideways. Let's do something really bold and go to the 90 minute chart of near. We do that with Bitcoin and Ethereum. So the good news in near is that there is tactical support at $9 and 53 cents. The bad news is it looks like they're selling every rally. Okay, so there is trend line support near $9.53. So if you're a believer and you want to meet the bears, go meet him at $9.53. Okay, Megan is asking for nano. I have to confess, I'm really intrigued about all these cryptos that can be used as money, right? I mean, I swear to God, if there was ever a time, like I talked about the future of money trade last year, Man, was I disappointed, okay? I'm looking at this nano chart. I mean, we talked about this. This is the four-hour chart with the 13 and the nine bottom. I personally think if nano is above 231, it's going to go up, not investment advice, right? And while I'm looking at this, I may also look at XRP. I mean, look at this nano daily chart. My God. So this is the 13, right? And then there's the huge puke down, right? And it makes a nine bottom. Now, if you get a 13 and follow by a nine, right? It's kind of like, you know, time to pay attention, right? I mean, something that's fast, cheap, you know, I mean, I know we had an analyst that was really into this for a long time and it did nothing but go down, right? But now could be the time. Now let's for laughs, let's pull up what my pet was, which was Dash out of Venezuela. Okay, this is what the people were using. All right, so not not as not as good looking as Nano. Okay, now I know there's a guy on here that likes Litecoin. 
Let's look at that. Let's look at Litecoin for a laugh. Okay. I kind of irritated everybody for a while at the start of the bull market by liking Litecoin, right? I got away with it. So, you know, Litecoin as money is tempting. Now it looks like everybody's selling it. So, you know, Nano and Bitcoin look better than some of these other solutions. All right. But I could, I could be tempted about for Litecoin at a hundred. It is at an even number. Let's just see if there's any hope here by looking at a 90 minute chart. Okay. So here's your short term tactical view. There's your 13 bottom. Now the question is, and again, it's not a bull market until you can buy a dip and make money. All right. Zoltan asking about Tezo. So if we're going to go through all the old school Coinbase coins. Okay. So this is the 90 minute chart of Tezos. So possibly making like a rounding bottom. Let's go to the four hour chart. I remember somebody saying once that Tezos was going to be the test net for the digital Euro. I don't think they're doing the digital Euro today because they got a lot of other problems, but I'll tell you what, this 13 bottom on, on Tezos, you know, some, some of this stuff like nano Bitcoin, right? I don't know. It looks okay to me. I mean, if you're not taking a shot, I don't care if I'm wrong, by the way. I didn't care if I was wrong by telling you don't FOMO at 45, right? Because if I buy support and I'm wrong, I just stop out. We just do a new video, right? You FOMO in at the top and get people caught. You know, it's like the cardinal sin. Uh, it's like the cardinal sin, right? So someone's asking for RNDR. Okay, that's metaverse. By the way, folks, I hope you're hitting the like button. I really hope so, right? We, we got to have three, 400 likes on a stream. Okay, again, a lot of people say it's the same story, right? Here was the 13 top, the nine top, the final thrust to stop everyone out. Then you've got the 13 bottom down here and now you have a stalemate, right? So, you know, who would think that the metaverse could rally in this environment? Certainly not me, but when you look at this, right? If there are higher quality metaverse plays, if, if that's even possible, right? Some of this stuff could be just so beat up, right? It's just so beat up, okay? Um, all right, so let's look at, okay, flip the switch to XRP. Okay, let's take a look at XRP. XRP will probably give us a different look, okay? Ooh, look at this. There's your 13 bottom and XRP folks. There's your nine. There's your 13. Okay. So I guess if you're going to shoot your shot in X XRP, not investment advice, but do it. I mean, you know, the, the government's trying to take it out, but you know, remember when XRP used to be like evil, it's like, Ooh, here comes the sec to take out XRP. Well, guess what, bro? There are a lot bigger problems out there now than XRP. XRP may actually benefit what's going on with the West. So can you imagine if XRP actually got exonerated? I mean, BitBoy really would be the total forever king of crypto because he's been on XRP forever. Now, it's still up to judicial, you know, it's still a legal process, but, you know, crypto as money, if crypto as money is not interesting in this environment, when you got everything from tactical nukes to Western currencies imploding to European banks blowing up. I mean, if crypto is not interesting in this environment, even if it's for like a month, I mean, folks, we're all fucked. So I say, take your shot, take your shot. All right. Somebody was asking for Algorand. Okay, so Algorand is one of these coins where venture capitalists, I think, just can't stop selling it, right? So the daily chart means you could have like two more days of suffering, right? It looks like they just keep selling it, right? I mean, there's, there's support on the four-hour chart, 
right, right at 73 cents. But there's this huge battle going on here, right? And, and the moral of the story is they just, they just keep selling this goddamn thing. Like it can't break a trend line. It's like some venture capitalist is unloading it. Now, that said, right, I have talked about this before on the stream. What happens when they sell and sell and sell and sell and they're out of ammo? This is what I think you want to be thinking in Algorand. So this is the 90-minute chart. And as you can see, right, every time this thing goes up, they just hammer on it. So there's a lot of support down here, like just below 70, like right around 7, 0.7138. And the real support is at 0.70. So I guess if they crack Algorand, Algorand may be approaching a, a point where if it makes a new low, it's a buy. Now, if you're long it, you're like, oh, Bill, really? I have to fucking put up with a new low? Yeah, you might. You might. Okay? But you're looking for evidence that the sellers are out of ammo. Okay, RSR. This was kind of another, like, coin I couldn't stop liking during, like, the key DeFi phase. Okay. So, big 13 bottom with follow-through. On the short-term chart, that's the 90-minute. That's constructive, okay? Okay, RSR has a 13 and a 9 bottom on the 4-hour chart, which is also potentially constructive. And if you look at the daily chart, well, it just looked like they puked it out so hard that they gave up on it, right? Here's the 13 bottom, right? This is also a five wave down, okay? So it's over and it looks like RSR wants to get started. So let's go to RSR over here. All right, so this really speaks to this whole alligator angle thing. So, you know, these blue bars can sometimes be hints of a bottom, right? And then that stalemate candle right there yesterday, right? I, you know what, folks? This is what I'm talking about in crypto, right? Certain stuff that has a value proposition, because RSR used to be kind of a hot coin, right? Certain stuff that has a value proposition may wind up coming back. Like, what do we talk about? Talk chain link, Ave, okay? Stuff like that, right? So reserve rights was an interesting DeFi play back in the day, and we'll see if it can hold. Okay, Oscar, we already covered XRP. It does have a DeMarc 9 bottom, all right? I'm sorry, a DeMarc 13 bottom. So I definitely wanted to make sure I covered reserve rights. Let's just make sure I do a weekly chart. See what I got here. Okay. So obviously, as you can see, reserve rights has been way above where it is right now. Now, one thing I think is interesting about this is this is the weekly chart. Okay. And it looks like reserve rights has gone all the way back down almost to where it started. Like literally, <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I don't know that I'm selling reserve rights down here because here's what the Elliott wave looks like. You know, this almost feels like value investing or value trading. That's what that looks like to me. That looks like a complete downtrend. So if you were stuck with this, I would say, stay with it, give it a shot. Right. If you were looking for a value trading play and you thought that Bitcoin could take off to like say 47 or 49, why not? Okay. All right. A AVAX we covered, but not on this system. So let's go look at AVAX. Okay, pulling up a daily chart.
Okay, so honestly, AVAX, tough to figure out, right? Sometimes, you know, depending on what chart you look at. So this is the eight hour chart of AVAX. All right. So what you saw is sellers tried to hammer this thing down, right? But they couldn't break below 70, right? They couldn't break 70. So this is AVAX eight hour. Okay. Now, one thing that I'm noticing here. is that you've got this like stalemate reversal candlestick, right? Right there. There's actually two of them where, you know, Avalanche started here, went up, came back down, but bulls held, right? Bears tried to smack it down twice. Now, Avalanche is pretty far away, okay, from its moving average system. You know, it depends how you draw these things. It's an art, not a science. But the bottom line is this. Solana looked okay. Okay. Polkadot looked okay. AVAX looks okay. ETH looks decent. Right? And I'm all of a sudden, I'm sitting here going, why is everyone negative crypto? Of course, yeah, I know the world is, is blowing up. I get it. But could there be a phase where crypto benefits from the world blowing up? So either today was the rally and tomorrow we go back to blowing up or it's like, Hey, let's think about buying dips. Okay. All right, folks. I think that is going to wrap it up today. That, that was an hour and a half. I think we got everybody who came in on super chat. So I want to once again, thank everybody for watching the show. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Okay. Now remember today I was bullish. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out, right? I get stopped out, right? If Bitcoin goes to 47 K you'll be kicking yourself. If you didn't take a shot below 40. Now, does the market look good? No, it doesn't look great. It doesn't, it's not exploding. It's not massively mooning. Okay. Eats up 3%. Bitcoin's up 2%. But just remember this, this is my final word. It never trades bad at a top and it never trades good at a bottom. So if you're like scared to buy it or you feel like FOMOing at the top, fade yourself, right? That fear is the clue that other people may feel the same way. So this is one of the cases where, like I said, if there's something wrong with Western currencies like the Polish currencies or the Euro, then the dawn of crypto, at least for a month or so, or even two weeks, where crypto is the way to go. So try that trade, not investment advice, use a stop. Okay, that's it for today. Saying goodbye to Driftless, right? Bitcoin Agenda, all right? Investigator 251, all right? Driftless and friends. We will see you next time.